said, everybody said, please um, don't leave the room. <laughs> well, listen to what she has to say before you do. Um, morning, everybody. Thank you for coming in after a long parents' evening last night. We'd like to talk this morning very briefly about purposeful marking. One of the things that uh, both Hannah and I feel quite passionate about, uh, making marking work for teachers, as well as getting the consistency across the school um, with the marking policy that we have. Um, we want to maximise the time that we put in with the students to get the biggest bang for the buck. And hopefully we've got five uh, top tips for you today that you can use straight away without any kind of preparation, really, um, in, your, in your practice. So, number one. Okay, first idea we have today, I have to thank um, Sarah Smith and Pip Thornton for this one, who are trying this in maths. And this was mentioned to me by a student, actually. Um, quite often when we're marking a whole class set of books, we find that we're repeating ourselves and writing out the same target again and again. So, uh, why not try a marking code? You could do a smiley face um, and a deeper target, give it a code, A, B, C, D and so on, and you could show this to the class at the beginning of the lesson. They write up their target themselves in their books, reinforcing what they need to do. And then you could provide them with a starter activity which matches up with the target. So this takes into account that at the beginning of the lesson, students often have very different starting points. And if they don't have a target, you can always give them a challenge as well. Uh, in at number two, um, <laughs> marking, for, marking for dialogue. Um, one of the things that I quite like doing, with, I hope you can see, I will email this out later. One of the things that I like doing is once I've marked a piece of work, is encouraging the students to respond to my comments. And then I will respond back to them, uh, and so on. So there's actually a dialogue going between, between us. Um, asking them to kind of highlight what they feel they've done particularly well or something that they feel that they're still struggling with that I maybe haven't picked up on. And other students as well commenting on their comments um, and so on. Um, so that there's a, a kind of interaction going on there and I can really get a feel for how they feel they're doing um, in lessons, how they feel they've done with a particular task. Number three. Uh, we're very good at providing students with the written feedback, but um, one thing we could work on is the, the oral feedback we give in class. Um, when students are, for example, undertaking project work um, and they, they, they don't need me sort of directly teaching them at the front of the class, quite often I'll go around the class and I'll mark the books with the students. This is really valuable because it gives them a chance to question anything um, as I'm marking and sort of um, have that dialogue with the students and, and it makes them feel a bit more informed. Um, unfortunately, my student child isn't look very happy there. <laughs> but, um, I think it's really valuable and it, and it definitely works. And I do find that I'm marking the books with the students and more marking is done. However, Hannah looks incredibly happy. <laughs> <laughs> I love marking. <laughs> Number four, marking for self-assessment. This is kind of a fun one to do. What, what, what I've done quite a lot with students is I will mark their work, but I won't actually put it in their book, so I'll keep a note of it myself. What they then have to do as a kind of starter or, or, or an activity is to go through and, using the criteria, using what the resources available, to identify clearly what their strengths are and what their targets are. Now, at that point, they then... Um, feed that back to me and if they get it right they win prize a merit a, a, a car a condo in somewhere and, um, condo. <laughs> um, so I, I then got a uh, which i will show them that i'm not lying i'm not making it up so i'll reveal this to them or hand them on slips but they've actually spent time thinking about um, what it is i probably would have said about their work um, so it's a kind of more enhanced version of self-assessment uh, finally um, <clears throat> If you ask the students to write down their targets at the top of their work before assessments, they know exactly what they're working towards, and we know exactly what we're marking for. Um, so it just sort of reminds them, they can, you can tick when they've met their targets as well, and again, reward them with merits, and so I'm not quite sure about the car thing, but no. <laughs> Also, what, what's useful there is that that same time for you as teachers, marking, because you're marking for a particular purpose, then not for a, certainly in English, there's a whole range of things we can look for. But if we're just looking for one or two particular things that cuts down time in marking and makes it a little more purposeful, which is really what the presentation was about today. Hopefully those sort of five tips are things that you could take away and use and start making use of one or two of them in your practice and um, make marking more purposeful for both yourself and uh, the students. Okay, so.